Not too much. Uh, okay, we're gonna start off today's session uh, with Daniel Oyafusi from the Baltimore Sun. Hey, hey, Keith. Yes, sir. I'm gonna. Can I say some stuff first? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, Coach. You start us off. Obviously, Danny and I go way back. Um, I think I was 18 years old. He was probably 17 uh, when we first met. Um, we've had a great relationship ever since. Obviously, did a lot together on the court uh, at Kansas. Had a lot of fun uh, doing that. Watched Danny's NBA career, and um, and then you know I watched him do everything the right way when he got into coaching. You know he didn't skip six levels just to become a head coach. He worked his way up from the lowest part uh, in college coaching to becoming a head coach at Tulsa and becoming a head coach uh, at Wake Forest. So it was it was really great to watch his progression. Uh, we, I always knew Danny was going to be a great coach because of you know I played with him. I know how smart of a player he was um, and um, probably never thought this time would happen uh, that we had joined together. And let's, let me tell you some reasons why. And I know you guys are going to ask him a lot of questions today. Number one, uh, when you sit in a head coaching seat, it's, it's, it's a, there's a lot that comes with it. And whenever you can have a guy on your staff that's been through it, like Danny's been through it, Matt Brady's been through it. They, they, they can take a lot off my plate and it can help me, um, get through the good times and the tough times uh, in, in college coaching. So that, that was a real positive, uh, you know, also in this decision, um, you know, obviously I think he's a tremendous coach. And then what people might not realize is Danny's really recruited this area hard um, for quite some time and is very well connected uh, in this area. Uh, feels very comfortable recruiting in this area. Um, you know, signed a player out of Gonzaga High School in D.C. Uh, it was a starting point guard for three years. So, um, you know, Danny knows the area well. So there was a lot of a lot of things. And then, you know, Danny and I just do great things together. We did it as players. Uh, we're going to do it as coaches. So um, just really thrilled to have him here. And I'll I'll open it up to questions now. Thanks, Keith. All right, thanks, Coach. Once again, if you have a question for Coach Manny or Coach Turgeon, please chat me privately. But we will start off today with Daniel Oyafusi from the Baltimore Sun. Uh, hi, Coach Manning. I hope you're doing well. Um, you know, for you seeing this opportunity, um, you know, just what um, about the opportunity to come to Maryland felt right um, and kind of led you led you to College Park? Well, what led me to College Park was the opportunity to work with Turge again. You know, Turge and I, we like you said, we go back and and for me being being in this business, my father was a college coach. And he always told me, he said, you want to work with people that you enjoy being around, that you trust, that are friends, because it is a job with unreal hours. And there's a lot of times that you're going to spend more time with your work staff than your actual family. And so that's something that's always stuck with me. And for me to have an opportunity to walk into a situation where I'm familiar with coach, we go back, we're good friends. I've had a good chance to get to know members of the staff and I felt really good connection and vibe there an opportunity to to come to an area that I'm comfortable in in the DMV and I'm excited to, to get out and continue to build relationships and, and open new doors for different possibilities in terms of just relationship building. And it's a part of the country that I enjoy. You know, I'm looking forward to being in the area and, and going to the restaurants and things of that nature when I have the opportunity to do those things outside of the job. So it's a no brainer for me because it gives me a chance to add another layer to my experience as a coach. And I'm looking forward to, to sharing that um, experience with my family. And we're, we're looking forward to coming to the area. Go to Andy Koska from the Washington Times. Hey, Mark and uh, Danny, for both of you, just thinking back to Kansas for a second, how much did Larry Brown Kind of shape or influence your coaching trajectories, how you handle your program, uh, and, and what uh, maybe what do you want to do here at Maryland together? Go ahead, Danny. I'll follow up. <laughs> coach Brown, you know, Coach Brown, the best coach I've ever played for, made me a better person, made me a better player. And the funny thing for me is, the longer I'm in coaching, the more sayings I refer back, refer back to that Coach Brown used to say to us. And, you know, that's kind of the impact that he's had on me. We still stay in contact more so now through texting than anything else. 
but you know, he's been a huge impact on me because he helped prepare me for basketball professionally. And he also helped prepare me for life. And um, I'm very grateful for the experience. I had a plan for him at Kansas and glad that he's someone I can always pick up the phone and reach out to. Yeah, I echo that. I, I've said all the time, I wouldn't be sitting where I'm sitting if it wasn't for Larry Brown. He changed my life uh, for the better um, multiple times um, when I was a kid coming out of high school and then he hired me as a coach and then I was kind of out of a job and he took me with him to the 76ers. So he's, 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 um, I wouldn't be here without him. He knows that. And I'm like, Danny, I'll, I'll start saying something. I'll be like, Oh my God, is that Larry Brown and Mark Turgeon talking? Um, so he has a huge influence and it'll be great to be with Danny again, one to tell the stories uh, about coach Brown, but, um, you know, he was phenomenal. And, um, he, he has a huge influence on the way I coach. And I know the way Danny coached because I watched Danny's teams play and the way that we're going to coach, you know, this team moving forward. So we're both very fortunate. You know, Danny was a heck of a player coming out of high school, but ended up being the number one pick in the draft. Um, you know, Coach Brown had a lot to do with that, um, you know, throughout his career. And he's just been very helpful. It's, his coaching tree is extraordinary. Um, all the people he's helped and touched and uh, been a part of their lives. And it's, it's really great to see. And so uh, we're, we were blessed to have them in our life. It's, it was an amazing, amazing thing. So, um, you know, we stay in touch, Danny and, and uh, with coach and, and uh, not as much as I'd like to sometimes, but uh, he might be showing his face here uh, when COVID's, COVID's done a little bit more since he's got uh, two guys on the staff that he coached. Thank you. Go to Barry Sverluga from the Washington Post. Hey, Mark, um, this is for you. I, I just wonder, you know, Danny had a long NBA career, um, could have stayed on as an analyst. He is diving back into coaching. Um, players of that magnitude and that star level don't necessarily tend to put in the work that's needed to be a successful coach. What does it say about him? And, and what have you learned about him? Maybe would you have seen that when he was 18 years old and becoming a dominant player? Well, I, I think it just, it, there's a competitiveness inside guys like Danny that never will never go away. And so like, what makes Danny tick? Um, because when he, when the things happened to Wake Forest, I'm like, hey man, you know, why don't you, you know, we, I called Danny. I was like, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And he goes, no, Turge, I want to coach still. And I was like, man, I hung up and I told my wife, I was like, he's crazy. He needs <laughs> to get out of this stuff, right? And um, then he went and did the TV and then the timing was right. And I asked him, I'm like, you sure? I mean, Danny, I mean, you sure you want to do this? And, you know, we've been, obviously we talked for a week and then he accepted the job and he's been, you know, grinding here for the last four or five days. Uh, for us so it's just in him it's what he he's just competitive um, it's what he wants to do I, I think I think what really helped him too is you know he, like he said he gets a chance to be with someone he, he knows he trusts he believes in and then he gets to come to this unbelievable great university with phenomenal basketball tradition and, and that's what he knows and so he's excited about that um, and so I, I think all that together and just that competitive spirit that he has is what's is the reason he's back doing it. Thanks. Go to Scott Abraham, ABC. Hey, Danny, uh, welcome to Washington College Park. Uh, glad to have you in the area. Uh, you know, you had a you had a time away. You, you were you were a basketball analyst this past year, and I'm wondering how important was that reset button in a sense, and what did you learn from that perspective of of analyzing the game from a different perspective and how did that maybe refresh you and, and maybe motivate you even more as you uh, start a new chapter in Maryland? Well, thank you for welcoming me. I'm excited about the opportunity of coming to the area without question. And for me, the year away gave me a chance to see some different things. It gave me a chance to grow and develop. I always had an interest in wanting to do analyst work on the game of basketball. And I got a chance to, to check that box. So I work with some great people at ESPN and very thankful for that opportunity. But for me, it just gave me a chance to take a step back, take a deep breath and realize what this game means to me. 
and I have a lot of energy, I have a lot of passion, and I've been very fortunate and very blessed. And I just feel like I'm at a point where I still have a lot to give to this game. And I wanna help our young people continue to grow on and off the court. That's extremely important to me to help develop a total overall, overall person. And being away from the game, I miss the competitiveness. I miss the interactions on the court with the players. I miss sitting down and visiting with the players over a meal about what's going on in their life or how they're trying to navigate certain things. And so that was a deciding factor for me. And then you throw on top of it a chance to come back and get into the profession again with somebody that I know and trust and, and look forward to, to being around every day. It was a wonderful opportunity. And Mark, I got a quick question for you. You mentioned uh, Danny having that head coaching experience and what that can add to you and, and to the coaching staff, specifically having that type of person that's been through the fire, that knows exactly what you're going through on a daily basis. How will that help you? Yeah, I mean, I can't really put into words just what Coach Brady's been able to do in his time here with me because when you lose, I mean, it is devastating. And, you know, to have guys that have sat in my seat to help me understand whether I lose a game, whether we lose a recruit, you know, whatever is going on, you know, player, player does something he's not supposed to do. Um, just to have a guy that's had to make those decisions and, um, you know, just tough, tough decisions or things that you have to go through. It really helps that, you know, you have guys with that kind of experience and be like, hey, the world's not coming to an end. You know, let me, you know, let me tell you why. And so it, it's, it's going to be great. And especially a guy that, um, you know, that 30 years ago or how many years ago it was a long time ago, we were battling together, trying to win games. And, uh, you know, so we, we, we trust each other. We have this, like, you know, this little thing inside of us that we, we know what the other guy's thinking. And um, it's just innate for me and him. And we've been, we've been apart for a long time, but I already feel it. So, um, but there's a lot of things with decision making. Um, when think when times are tough, like him and Coach Brady are just because they've set my seat can really help me. Thanks again, guys. Welcome, Danny. Thank you. Thanks. We'll go to David Cobb from CBS Sports. Uh, yeah, Danny, what role does your lengthy NBA career play in the way you're kind of able to recruit high school players who who also want to reach that level? Well, I think my NBA career plays a, a very big part in the sense of uh, very fortunate and very blessed to have played in the NBA for 15 years. And, you know, that's part of a lot of aspirations and goals that a lot of the young people that we're recruiting and coaching, they want to get to that level. And so for me, being able to share my experiences with them um, gives me an avenue that I think is fairly unique, but also in the sense of I did it on three ACLs. I'm the only player in the history of the NBA to blow his knee out three times and play in the NBA. So that's something I'm very proud of. Um, and I don't wish that on anyone, but so I've had a chance to, to go into the NBA, which was a lifelong goal, which was I was blessed to do, but also to figure out a way to, to navigate staying at that level on three ACLs when the first time I had it my rookie year is considered career threatening. And so those experiences are just things I'm able to share with guys, but Navigating injuries, playing at a high level, um, getting to a level where you realize, wow, everybody's good at this level. What can I do to set myself apart? How do I need to break the game down? How do I need to look at the game? How do I need to prepare for my opponents? What do I need to do in order to continue to have a chance to be successful and stay at this level in terms of adding to my game? And so all those things I think are very beneficial to me. Um, in a sense, you know, and, and I like to tell the kids from time to time, you know, to ask to know the road ahead, you ask somebody that traveled it. And I've been very fortunate and blessed to, to have traveled that road. Time for a couple more. First, John White. Hi, Coach Manning. This question's for you. Congrats on the hire and welcome to College Park. I just wanted to ask you, what does this opportunity mean to you? And what is your main goal in helping Coach Turgeon and the rest of the staff to accomplish this coming season? Thank you. Um, I want to help. I'm here to help. I'm here to learn. I know that um, in this profession, 
we all borrow and, and steal, if you will, different ideas and we tweak them to our personnel. And so for me, being a part of Turgis staff, following his leadership, blending with the other coaches, I just want to bring my experiences and help out any way that I can. And that's what it's all about. You know, that's what team is. It's you sacrifice, but it's my definition of sacrifice is not necessarily what you give up, it's what you bring. And, and I feel like I, I have a lot of experiences and I'm bringing to this group that I will be able to add. And hopefully, you know, we throw it in the jumbo and make it, make it taste a little bit better. But that's what I want to do. I want to learn from the coaches. I want to learn from the guys on the team because I don't know it all. I have really good experiences that I want to share, but I, I'm, I'm an open book. And I always want to be at a point where I'm always trying to gain insight. And I feel like I can gain a great deal of that from Turge, from his staff, um, from Damon, from people that I come across at the university. And, and that's just kind of my mindset. But I'm just looking forward to adding my little two cents and being a great team player. Thanks, Coach. All right, last question today, Lauren Rosh from Testudo Times. Hi, Coach Manning. You just kind of touched upon this. First of all, congratulations. But my question is for both of you, as you kind of look back on this longstanding, you know, relationship that you have together, what have you learned from one another? And as you move into this new phase of your relationship working together, what are you kind of hoping to learn from each other in this new setting? Go ahead, Serge. I was talking. Um, how about that? Um, yeah, I, I, I think you know, already Danny's energized our staff. Um, ch change is good. Sometimes people don't want to change. Change is good. Um, you know, every year, um, I think what Daniel realizes, is I, I got a lot, a lot of Larry Brown in me. Uh, we've coached our team differently the last three years because of personnel. Uh, we had Bruno three years ago. We played through Bruno. Then we had Sticks, and we played five out. Uh, and then this year's personnel, we had to really change the, almost everything the way we coach. So, you know, we'll, we'll learn from that, but he's really, he's really energized our staff, um, you know, with recruiting, um, you know, the, I think about, and, and understand Danny's not just a big man coach. He's a great basketball coach. So he'll work with the guards and big guys, but everybody's just going to assume because he's big, he's just a great big man coach, which he is. Um, but I think about all the big guys that he signed, all the big guys that I've signed, all the guys that have played in the NBA that are six, eight, six, nine or taller. Uh, we got quite a resume together. So um, I'd like to think we can do great things there um, together. But he's energized our staff and um, he's going to have a big input. He's, he's a real humble guy, but he's going to have a big input. And he'll he went through some things. His team's played fast. You know, the way recruiting is going for us this year so far. Um, you know, I think we're gonna be able to play a little bit faster than we did this past year, obviously. And Danny can maybe help me because they really played fast at Wake Forest and got out and tried to score in seven or eight seconds. So, you know, maybe maybe he'll help have a, a big input, uh, uh, our handprint on that this year. We'll see. You never know what's gonna happen between now and the season. But all his experiences and all my experiences, and even Coach Brady, who's been around, and all his experience, you bring all that together, we can come up with, you know, hopefully a good enough game plan and a good enough uh, idea of what we need to do with our team and what we need to do with each game. And our experiences will help us do that. Um, first and foremost, for me, thank you for welcoming me to the area. Um, it's step into the situation and I'm learning, you know, I'm, I'm watching film daily on how Turgis teams have played the last few years, how they were playing last year, how they played in the tournament. And for me, I want to get on the court. I want to see how things are done, and then I will adapt and go from there. But the biggest thing for me is I'm very comfortable with the leadership of Coach Turge and how he does things, how he carries himself, how he moves in the community. And that's something that's very important to me. I want to make sure that I'm visible in our community. I want to make sure that we have a chance to recruit the talented players in this wonderful area of great scholastic basketball and just add, that's, that's what I want to do. I want to add, I want to share, I want to get better at individually, but I also want to help our team get better. And that's just kind of the way that we were broke into this game, if you will. You know, Coach Brown always used to say, here's one of those sayings, it's another day to be great. And, you know, I try to, in this day and age, 
I feel like having that type of mindset and making sure that I start every day with a grateful heart and share that with the people I come in contact with every day is something that I want to do. Coach Manning, Coach Turgeon, appreciate it. Thank you for your time today. Coach Manning, once again, excited to have you in College Park. Can't wait to see you on the sidelines uh, at Xfinity Center this year. Um, so thanks, media. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, right. guys. Thank you.